In this Composer Notes tutorial, we'll set up an alarm in an F4T controller. To set up an alarm, we'll take an alarm function block from the library and put it on the canvas. An alarm block monitors an analog signal and generates an alarm when that signal goes above or below the user's set alarm conditions. Connect the analog signal you want the alarm to monitor to the IN receiver. Here we use the same input signal that Loop 1 uses for control. To make something happen when an alarm occurs, connect the alarm's transmitter to another function block. Here I connect it to an output. Now let's configure how the alarm works. The way it is now, the alarm doesn't do anything because type is set to off. The other choices are process alarm and deviation alarm. Let's start with process alarm. The sides parameter determines whether the alarm monitors for low, high or both high and low conditions. I only want the alarm to occur when the signal is too high, so I'll set sides to high. Setting the alarm's high set point to 75 makes it easy to demonstrate how the alarm works. By right-clicking the signals and selecting Show High Data, we can monitor the signal values. When the temperature is below the alarm's high set point, the block's transmitter is off. When I raise the temperature to 75 or above, the transmitter turns on. When the temperature drops back down, the transmitter turns back off. To keep the transmitter on after the temperature drops back below the alarm set point, I'll set it to be a latching alarm. Now when the alarm occurs, the transmitter turns on, and even when the temperature drops back down, it stays on until I clear the alarm. To be able to turn the alarm transmitter off before the temperature drops back down, I'll turn on the silencing feature. Now when the alarm occurs, I can silence it even when the temperature is still above the high set point. This doesn't clear the alarm state, so it doesn't clear the alarm message from the controller display, but it does turn off the transmitter and the output connected to it. Once the temperature does drop below the alarm set point, I can clear the alarm. Because the temperature drops quickly in this example, it's hard to see, but I can't clear the alarm until the temperature is one degree below the high set point. To require that the actual temperature drop three degrees below the alarm set point, I'll change hysteresis to three. So far, we've been looking at how a process alarm works. For a process alarm, you set the high set point and low set point directly or absolutely. I set the high set point to 75 degrees, and the alarm occurs at 75 degrees. To make the alarm relative to another value, I'll change the type to deviation alarm. The deviation alarm requires an additional signal that determines a center value, and the high and low alarm set points are set relative to that. Typically, you want the deviation alarm to be relative to a control loop's set point. When the alarm's type is set to deviation alarm, the CTR receiver becomes available. Connecting the control loop set point transmitter to the CTR receiver makes the alarm set points relative to and centered on the loop's set point. Since for a deviation alarm, the alarm set points are relative to the loop set point, if I want the alarm to occur when the temperature is 5 degrees or more above the loop set point, I set the alarm's high set point to 5. If the loop's set point is 75, the alarm will occur at 80. It's convenient to tie the alarm to the loop set point in this way when you want to be notified if there's a deviation from set point. However, sometimes deviations are expected and alarms can be a nuisance. When the power is turned on to a machine, it normally takes time for the control loops to reach set point. Also, when you change a loop set point, it takes time for the loop to reach the new value. The alarm's blocking feature can be set to ignore alarm conditions for set point changes and startup. Alarm blocking allows a system to warm up after being powered up or to be adjusted without experiencing nuisance alarms. Set alarm blocking to prevent alarms before the monitored signal has first come within the normal operating range defined by the alarm set points. Delay time is another alarm feature that can be used to minimize nuisance alarms. For example, if it's okay for the temperature to go more than 5 degrees above the set point for a short time, let's say 5 seconds, but I want the alarm to notify me if the deviation lasts longer than that, I'll set the delay time to 5. That delays triggering the alarm for 5 seconds and prevents it altogether if the deviation goes away in less than 5 seconds. 
The amount of time delay depends on the specific application, but this can be a useful alternative to simply raising the high set point to avoid nuisance alarms. The logic setting determines if the alarm block's transmitter switches on when the alarm occurs, or is on when there is no alarm and switches off when the alarm occurs. The display setting determines whether or not the alarm shows up in the user interface when it occurs. If you want to use the alarm block to perform a task that doesn't require any operator intervention and you don't want any alarm message displayed on the user interface, set display to off. This would normally be used with a non-latching alarm since no one will be notified to clear it. You may have noticed that there are three receivers on the block that I haven't used. The SIL receiver attempts to silence the alarm when it receives an on signal. The CLR receiver attempts to clear the alarm when it receives an on signal. And the off receiver overrides the alarm when it receives an on signal. For more details about alarms, see the help and the controller manual. There are more Composer Notes tutorials for other function blocks coming up.